This video is continuing right where the previous video left off. We are still in part 025 matrices and plotting, and I'm scrolling down to the quick review section. I'm not sure how quick it's actually going to be. This video is going to cover a bunch of stuff having to do with vectors, matrices, indexing, and perhaps a few little niche features of MATLAB. All of the code in this video works exactly as shown in Octave as well as in MATLAB. So the first thing to know about MATLAB is that basically all of your data is a matrix. Now that's not entirely true, but even single numbers, like A equals bracket 3.5, is the same as B equals 3.5. This is a one row, one column matrix containing the number 3.5. Control Enter. Actually, I forgot to have a clear CLC, so let's just add that in. Clear CLC, get us back to a blank slate, and try again. Control Enter. I'm scrolling up in my command window. Great, there we go. So, 3.5, 3.5. These are the same. By the way, you can put more than one piece of code on the same line, so long as you make sure to use your semicolons to separate them. Actually, as I say that, I'm not even sure the semicolon... Yep, nope, turns out it is necessary. All right, continuing on down. These are the same. So when you create a vector, you can separate your values by just a space, a comma and a space, just a comma, any of those are the same. I'm gonna switch over to format loose, double spacing for the next section. And I just wanna demonstrate that A, B, and C right here all create the exact same matrix, whether you create it like this, all on one line. This is my least favorite thing, I do not recommend it. But the first row, values are separated by commas, semicolon to indicate going down to the next row. And then the second row, I've also separated by commas. These aren't, the commas aren't even necessary. The spaces would be plenty. But as you can see in the output, these three matrices all contain the exact same information. Probably B is my favorite, but you'll see me use C all the time just because I'm in the habit of putting semicolons at the end of lines. And that is a habit developed partly in MATLAB, but also a lot in Java. Continuing on down. Composition. This is actually the exact same composition example from an earlier video, but here I have a vector b that has two values in it. Let me actually run this section. Let me resize and try and run it again. There we go. It doesn't fit well on the screen, but we'll deal. So b is a vector of two numbers, 1.5 and 3.1 right there. And if I want to put a 3 out front of these two values, good news. I just use the square brackets to indicate a vector, put a 3 in, and then a space or a comma or both, and then b and a new vector is created that contains both the 3 and the values from vector b. And this new vector s, or any other vector, so long as the rows and columns line up correctly, can be used to create a new matrix, such as t right here, where I've got a first row with 1, 2, and 3, and then the three values from this vector form the second row. Now probably I should write it down on the next line here because I think that's easier to read, but the result would be the same. Indexing can be used to access a value or change it. So here I've got a vector 3, 8, and 5. I can get access to the second value in this vector, the 8, by setting some new variable equal to vect parentheses 2, the second value from vect. Or I can say put into the position of vect parentheses 2 this number 1 here, and then replace the 8 with this one value. Now I'm going to go back to single space, back to the format compact, and continue on down. This is a really interesting and maybe not very advisable feature of MATLAB. So here I've got a vector with just 3, 8, and 5 in it, and if I uh, calculate the length using the length function and then display it out, I will display 3 right there. By the way, just a reminder, one way to display lots of information on one line is to use display, parentheses, square brackets, the text in apostrophes, comma, and then any numbers you want with a num to string, and then close off the square bracket and the apostrophes. I will show you other ways to do that a little bit later on, but here's one way to do it. So it's a like three vector, right? Three, eight, and five, great. On this line of code, what I am doing is I am putting the number nine into the vector at position four. Now, most other programming languages would throw an error at this point because there is no position four. There's only positions one, two, and three. But MATLAB is super chill about it, and is like, yeah, no problem. We'll just put the 9 in there right at the end. We'll pretend there was a position 4, and now there is. Now, it is a length 4 vector, and it gets weirder. Suppose I want to put into my vector at position 8 
a 9.5 or any other number. It doesn't really matter. Well, position 8? There's no position 8. I mean, heck, there's no position 5, 6, or 7 either. So what happens when I do this? Control Enter. Well... MATLAB just fills it in with zeros and then puts the 9.5 at position 8. It says, my work here is done. So, yeah, that's a bit weird. Um, I think that this is probably not advisable because there's a lot of ways that someone could make a mistake, use the wrong index, and then really mess up their vector without even realizing it. But it is the way MATLAB works, so you need to be aware of it. Continuing on down. MATLAB is what I call column dominant. And what I mean by that is most of its functions operate on a per column basis. So here is my matrix uh, M. Let me try that again with a wider screen. I do use the large font size, which sometimes makes it hard to fit everything in the command window. All right, so there's my matrix M and I can use M parentheses, a single colon to stack all of these values vertically. So first column one stacked right there column two, stacked beneath it, column three, and so on, on down. And that's really useful if I want some operation to apply to the entire matrix, because most functions apply, like I said, on a per column basis. Now suppose I want to get access to this matrix at row two, column three. Well, I say the name of the matrix, parentheses, two comma three. And that'll give me the number four right here. Scrolling back up, there's row two, there's column three. Now I can actually use just a single index to also get access to that four. And it would be like I was counting down a single column right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but instead it's still the matrix M right here. The counting goes down the columns before it goes over to the next column. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I would recommend avoiding this. I recommend using both rows and columns because I think it's easier to read and people won't make the mistake because that's not really how you read English, right? We read English along one row before we move down to the next row, but MATLAB is column oriented. Continuing on down. The colon can be used to represent an entire row or column. Let me resize and run this code here. All right, so here's my example matrix M right here. If I want all the rows in column one, so I want the one, two, and three, I simply say, okay, put into my variable from M, all rows, comma, column one. Suppose I want all the rows in column four. And there they are. Well, I say M parentheses, all rows, comma, column four. Maybe I want all the columns in row two. I say from M, row two, comma, all columns. Rows come first, columns come second. Colon can be used to grab all you want of either of them. It is the same as one colon end, but we programmers, we like to be efficient and or lazy, and so we can just write the colon by itself. Indexing with intervals. All right, so there's my example matrix M up top right here. Uh, I can extract out from it rows two and three, all columns. So that's what I put into W right here. So everything from those last two rows, great. I can extract out just a little square, this five, six, seven right here. So these are rows two and three, columns four and five, right? This right here, up in that corner. Continuing on down. It doesn't have to be contiguous rows and columns. I can say, give me rows one and three, columns one, three, and five. And that will get me this data right here, which I'm having trouble fitting it quite on the screen. Let me see if I can, there we go. So now there's the matrix at the top and I've grabbed rows one and three and from rows one and three, columns one, three, and five. This right here is gonna show a interesting little feature of MATLAB. So uh, here's my example matrix. And I said in an earlier video, you kinda of need to put a square peg in a square hole. You need to make sure your dimensions align correctly. For example, what I might have shown in that video is if I'm gonna put zeros over top of column two here, well, I should have a vector of zeros instead of just uh, any other arrangement. I should have a vector that fits in that space. And this also does work. If I rerun this section, it works perfectly the same as before. However, because we like to be lazy and efficient, I can just put in a zero and that also works. So MATLAB will assume that if I'm assigning information into some matrix or vector and it's more than one position in that matrix or vector, all of those values, all of the values in those positions should be replaced by this single value, whatever it is. 
And you can also rearrange your columns. So let me run this section here. I wish I could fit it on the screen. All right, you can also rearrange uh, your rows and columns. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put into this variable named T copies of M, all the rows, columns, well, all the columns, one, two, three, four, and five, but column one is first, followed by three, followed by two, followed by five, and then four. So you can see if I go back up and recreate M and then rerun this section here, like this column right here got moved to this column over here and a variety of other shuffling happened. And we can do that just by putting the columns in different orders. And we could also even make duplicates. Maybe I just want a bunch of copies of column three. Let's make it narrower so I can actually fit it on the screen. So I just want three copies of column three. Well, there we go. Now I've got it. End is super useful. The use of end in indexing is just so useful. And also this section is going to give you a little preview of fprintf. So let me resize and run. All right, so I've got this little tiny matrix right here. One, two, three, four. And suppose I want whatever's in the last column of row one. So row one, column end. I just use the word end. And end will adjust to however big my matrix is. That's what makes it so handy. Suppose I want the second row, second to last column. Now, I'm all, I mean, that's literally the three here. I could have just put a one in instead of end minus one. But what's nice about this is if I know that I always need row two, second to last column, I can always use this indexing regardless of the size of the matrix. I don't have to write special code and then change it if the matrix changes. I just used end minus one and the end is what adapts. Now, fprintf we have not seen before. Uh, if you have ever programmed in a C or Java language or probably others, you may have seen printf. Yeah, this is pretty much the exact same thing. It is fprintf, so there's an F on both sides of the print, so the name is slightly different. We're still using the apostrophes rather than quotation marks. But the placeholders, so percent %d right here, is a placeholder for an integer. So then when I have comma and then x right here, whatever the value of x is, is going to be substituted into this location when this prints out. So that is how I printed out this 2 right here. The percent %d gets two substituted in for it. Likewise, in this last line right here, this percent %d gets x substituted in, but now x has a different value, and it's the three right there. The backslash n is to indicate go down to the next line. If we do not have the backslash n, well then the text all gets displayed on one line, and that's not very easy to read, so I don't like that. So we put the backslash n in. If we put two backslash n's, well then there would be an extra space in between. There are many other placeholders. If you've not seen this before, it can be a little bit confusing. Like, why is it D for integers? Well, actually it's D for decimal, but even that's confusing because what that means is base 10, 10 digits. It does not mean decimal places. If you want decimal places, you use percent %f, control enter. And there you can see, now we see the decimal places. Why would f be for decimal places? Well, because it's a floating point number anyway. And what does that mean? Well, there's a historical reason. Um, just Google it if you need to. We will visit fprintf later in the course again, later in the videos. But for now, percent %d is going to be for your integers. Percent %f is going to be for your numbers that have decimal places. And that's all you really need to know for now. Continuing on down. Indexing with intervals. We don't just have to index with a single number, we can use a whole range. And we've already seen this, but let's see it again and some more. As always, I'm going to resize and then try it again. All right, so I've got my example matrix M up top here. And suppose that I want to replace row two all columns with this vector. Well, this is the line of code that would do it. Now I need to make sure my vector is the right size. You heard that error message ding just a minute ago. Um, that's because in this example, I'm going to show that I, if you don't put in the right dimensions, you're trying to put a square peg in a round hole, it won't work. So here's my vector that fits into this row, and there it is substituted in. The rest of the matrix is unchanged. And then suppose I want to change all rows, column three, and put in this vector of values. Well, I can do it and have done it right there. Now, this line of code also actually works, which seems to contradict my thing of like, oh, you need to put a square peg in a square hole, because this is one row, three columns, but this is three rows, one column. 
Well, in this particular case, or in general, when you're putting a vector into a location, if the vector is a row vector or a column vector, as long as it's got the right number of numbers, MATLAB will put it in in the way you expect. So that also works, right? We see the 66, 77, 88 works on either of these lines of code, but this one does not. You can't put two numbers in a location that is expecting three numbers or vice versa. You can't put three numbers into a location that's expecting two. So that does cause an error. Continuing on down. Little tiny review of arithmetic on matrices. So let's look at this code here. Control enter. We got X, X is a vector from one through five. We have y, which is a single number, just five. I multiply them together with the asterisk or star and put it in a variable a, easy peasy, no problems here. And if I get rid of that and try it again, but I use x dot star y, it also works in exactly the same fashion. And that is one of the reasons I recommend that you use dot star all the time. Because until we get into matrix multiplication, which is a different operation, you want to make sure you're doing the element-wise or pairwise multiplication, where we just pair up this 5 with all the values in x and multiply it repeatedly and get those five different values. Because, scrolling down, if you use that operator on two vectors or two matrices, it may not work the way you expect. Control enter So we get an error here. So what's the deal? Well, x is a vector of three variables, and y is a vector of five variables, so right there we see at least one problem. But there's actually multiple problems here, and my advice that I have in the comment is you really need to run your code regularly. You need to test it frequently using Control enter or whatever shortcut you like. If you like to click on the Run Section button, then do that, so that errors don't pile up. Because you really want it to be the case that if you fix an error, you have no more errors. Because if you're new to these things, and you think you have a fix, but then there's still an error, you might not realize that you did something correct, but now there's another error beneath it. So let me show you what I mean. I'm just going to copy this code down below and follow along as I fix it. So suppose I notice that these are incompatible sizes, and maybe I got that from reading the error message, incorrect dimensions for matrix multiplication. Oh yeah, right, maybe I meant to put two more values in here. And so I'll put in 20 and 24 and try it again, because aren't they the same length now? Five and five should work. So let's try that out, control enter. Ah, I still get an error. And it still says incorrect dimensions for matrix multiplication. So if I'm really new to MATLAB or programming in general, I might think that I haven't made any progress and maybe I go back and I delete that. But now I'm actually really stuck because that was correct. You do want to make sure these are the same length. But the other thing that I need to do is assuming that I want to do a pairwise multiplication, eight times four, 12 times six, just pairing up each of these numbers and multiplying, I can't use star or asterisk. I need to use dot star. And that's the second fix. And now when I run it, control enter, it works perfectly. Eight times four is 32, 20 times 10 is 200 and they're all paired up and multiplied. Run your code frequently, test it, fix errors as quickly as you can, prioritize fixing errors. Don't move on with your code and think, oh, I'll just like fix it, I'll go back and fix it later. You may be introducing more problems that's gonna make it harder to fix. And that's a recommendation I give for any programming student in any programming language. And that's all for this video.